Well, I'm Simon Moore. Uh, my expertise is in computer architecture, and over the last uh, 12 years, I've been working with my colleague. I'm Robert Watson. I work in system security and architecture, and Simon and I have been building a system called Cherry. So what is the CAP computer? So the CAP computer uh, is an experimental machine from the 1970s. In fact, this was shown to me by uh, David Wheeler, who mentored me when I was a PhD student. And with Morris Wilkes and Roger Needham, they led the project on this machine. This machine was to explore um, a security-based technique around the idea of capabilities, which are unforgeable tokens of authority. And in the CAP case, uh, programs had sets of capabilities that gave them permissions to access regions of memory. So what are capabilities for? The creators of CAT were working with a really exciting idea, uh, software compartmentalization. In software compartmentalization, we break larger pieces of software out into small units or compartments, each of which are assigned only a few capabilities, and that allows that software to only work with certain objects in the system. Originally, this idea was developed for robustness. If you had a bug, the damage the bug could cause would be limited to one of these compartments. But the idea that the creators of the CAP were looking at was that if you had malicious software, the damage an attacker could do would be limited to only a few of the rights that are held just by the compartments that they compromised. So what is Cherry? Uh, Cherry is a protection model. It's an abstract set of ideas about how we can use capabilities to limit what software does. But Cherry is also a concrete implementation. Uh, it's a computer processor design and instruction set architecture that controls how software is able to access the resources of a computer. And unlike today's architectural designs, it's designed to limit those at every point during execution. Is it allowed to access this piece of memory, or this file, or this piece of the network? It's an inherent part of the design in a way that current computer systems just don't and can't do. And how do Cherry capabilities differ from capabilities in, say, the CAP? I think you know the, the principle is very similar. It's the idea that you're delegating the right to access some object or some piece of memory, but the implementation is fundamentally different. You know, we build our design based on contemporary out-of-order processes that execute billions of instructions a second, and the way those computer systems are designed and structured is completely different from what was present in the CAP. Our capabilities are carried smoothly and fluidly through memory. They can refer to almost anything the computer is doing. And unlike CAP capabilities, when a piece of software chooses to use a capability, it has to name a specific capability. And this is really important. This is an idea mm -hmm. of intentionality. It's important not just that we limit what resources are available, but also ensure software uses the right resource, because using the wrong resource is a security problem too. The 1970s idea of compartmentalization is really interesting. It says that as you begin to isolate software components and give them fewer rights, you're more and more robust to vulnerabilities or malicious code in that software. Mm -hmm. The question is how far you want to take that idea. It's easy for us to imagine an application like a word processor being in one of these boxes. But we want to take it much farther than that. We want to know that if you paste an image into a word file and the image contains an attack, the remainder of your document is safe, which means we need a lot more of these compartments. And this is one of the things that Cherry is actually able to do is produce orders of magnitude more compartments efficiently. If you try to do that with today's hardware, batteries would just drain as you use your phone. You, know, you would run out of energy, they would be much slower, to the point where it wouldn't be commercially viable to use that kind of technique. With Cherry, we hope that these things will not only be viable, but heavily encouraged. How much work has been involved in uh, developing Cherry? I think Cherry is really unusual as projects go, not just at the lab, but across academia. Uh, we have a team currently of about 25 people across SRI International, the University of Cambridge, and our immediate collaborators who've been working on this project for 12 years. There's over 150 staff years so far on Cherry in the research side alone, and that is quite unusual for an academic project. Why do this sort of work in an academic environment? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, I think one thing that's interesting with the way the computer industry's gone is, you know, the computer industry is vast, but it's ended up uh, largely sort of separating out into hardware and software companies. And sure, some of the hardware companies do a certain amount of software, and some of the hard software companies do uh, a certain amount of hardware. But still, in terms of engineering and design optimization, they tend to go within their own specialities. Whereas what we've done is what we call a full stack design. So we're looking at hardware and software and all aspects of the software, uh, you know, operating systems, compilers, applications, and so on. And um, 
you know, that's difficult to do in industry. What do you think is unique uh, about Cambridge that allows us to do this sort of research? Cambridge is a really interesting place to work. It's rare to have research labs where you not only have the spread of expertise across hardware and software and full methods, but they are actively integrated in the same research center. Collaborations happen every day across boundaries that you find not just in industry, but also in academia. Cambridge is also amazing in terms of its links to industry. Uh, it's been very exciting to work in the same city as Arm. You know, for the first four or five years of our project, we really had very little interaction with them. But almost as a result of an accident, an invited talk by one of our PhD students at Arm, you know, Arm was able to engage with the research and come work in our lab uh, as a space for collaboration. And it's a, it's a great place. There's very few places that you could actually do that, have all that expertise, and also have all those connections. So what's next for Cherry? Well, the first thing is we need to get the hardware out there. Um, and really, our ambition is to get Cherry-enabled hardware absolutely everywhere, on every platform, uh, in every system. Um, and then uh, we can really work on the software deployment of that. So what's it going to take to deploy the software on all of this new hardware? I think it's really hard. There's this chicken and egg problem. If you don't have the hardware, you can't write the software. If you don't have the software, why are you building the hardware? Uh, so we're spending a lot of time on this problem. So how do we get Cherry out of the research lab and into everyone's hands? Yeah, it's a real enormous challenge. I mean, the first thing we need to do is actually get Cherry-enabled hardware out there. And um, one of the things we've been able to do is engage with Arm Limited, who are headquartered in Cambridge. Uh, Arm produce processors for all the world's mobile phones and tablets and starting to do so for servers and, and, um, and other forms of compute. Uh, and it's been great to engage with them. So what is Arms Morello? Well, to begin with, Arms Morello is uh, actually a, a cutting edge silicon chip um, and a board. And that's really, it's going to be a prototype designed to break the chicken and egg problem. So at least we have some hardware that software can use. And with our industrial engagement at the moment, uh, roughly how many people have been involved on the industry side producing the Morello prototype? Mm. I mean, we started our collaboration with Arm in about 2014 and had a fairly small team, a couple of people working with us. But two years ago, when the Arm Morello project started up with the support of UKRI, uh, Arm has had up to 100 staff members working on the project. And we have dozens of researchers at uh, Microsoft, Google, and elsewhere in industry, uh, and also many other universities now working on Cherry as well. So what engagement have we had with the software industry? I think part of the challenge in transitioning Cherry is these two parts, the hardware people and the software people, and how out of sync their development and timescales are. To transition the hardware, we need software pull. To generate software pull, we need the hardware, and that's where Armorello is so helpful. We've been working closely with Microsoft and Google and various other companies trying to understand how Cherry can change the way that they write software. And they see potential for enormous benefit, but they also need to know that it's real. And that is where Morello will play a role.